the principle of Occam's razor that suggests that the simplest explanation is often the most accurate. So what evidence makes you believe that the DMT state is something other than just a hallucination? And is it possible that in the Bible those are just hallucinations as well? Uh, they could be a hallucination, but still, you know, those hallucinations occur in a person under you know, various influences, both internal and external. And they contain information which the person may or may not want you know, to relate, which may or you know, may not be harmful or helpful you know, to the larger community. You know, so in the you know, case of Ezekiel, who you know, somebody said to me one day, oh, isn't he schizophrenic? Yeah, he's um, an odd, odd man. Right, he's a very wild, crazy person. Yeah, just uh, completely out there. Um, yeah, you know, so he may have been schizophrenic, uh, but still, he may have also been inspired in his you know, visions by external things. For example, um, spiritual forces, spiritual influences, you know, things that you can't you know normally see. You know, just like any other invisible influence, you know, the weather, gravity, uh, his genes, or whatnot. Um, and uh, his you know, character was one that uh, was, you know, deeply immersed in the Jewish you know, people. Um, and uh, anything that he experienced, you know, was intended to both chastise and provide hope to the Jewish people. You know, you could be schizophrenic and make accurate predictions. You can be schizophrenic and be quite a helpful member of your community. You could be schizophrenic and be, you know, violently, you know, dangerous and you know, need to be restrained or, you know, secluded, you know, uh, for you know, various, you know, times in your life. But that that reminds me of the biological basis for the shaman. The shaman was like in the anthropology from indigenous tribes, they would generally say the shaman was one who had a, some sort of overwhelming mental crises or a near death experience in their youth. Uh, it was overwhelming to them. And then they had to seek training from a more experienced shaman. And oftentimes, maybe it's a bit facetious, but they were often thought of as like a cured madman. There is parallel, I believe from those two archetypes of the prophet serving the Jewish community or and then the, the shaman serving the indigenous communities. Their techno yeah. Spiritual technology would be different, but if we're just looking at the broadest archetype, I think there is a connection there. Yeah, you know, socially anyway. Yeah, socially. Um, you, you know, they're you know, both experienced it um, as outcasts. They both, you know, live on you know, the edges of uh, you know, the community in general, you know, just because they're, they're feared uh, and misunderstood and confusing. And um, yeah, yeah. And also, I think if you're inclined to those kinds of you know, vocations, you need time to yourself. <laughs> yeah. uh, you need to be left alone. Uh, yeah, you know, so uh, you know, living on you know, the outskirts of the community you know, suits those you know, kinds of you know, people you know, for those reasons as well.